Hey beautiful friends, I just want to dive right into the deep with you all today and deliver for you what the Lord poured into me the other night. I was awake through the night praying and I'm going to bring verbatim for you what the Lord spoke to my heart for you to pray and to weigh and I pray that the Lord by the Holy Spirit will touch, bless, encourage, empower, equip hearts and lives today and zero to hero is what I heard the Spirit of the Lord say. And are you ready to lean in with me right now? Uh, the Holy Spirit, I sent, say to my heart, pursue your enemy and take God's destiny. More than that, take your dynasty. Take God's destiny, take God's dynasty for your life. I sense so strongly as I prayed the other night and I've been feeling it in my spirit for a number of weeks and months now that that dirty devil, the enemy has come for the generations. The enemy has come for our children. The enemy is not having this next generation. They belong to Jesus. They are sealed with the blood of Jesus and we're claiming our children for him. All of our children shall be taught of the Lord and great will be the peace, the shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken from our our children that's the word of the Lord we declare it we decree it so be it I sense the spirit of the Lord saying fresh surrender brings fresh fire behold I am making all things new that which feels tired tarnished and old is being made new divine restoration in the presence of the Lord relationships calling ministry your workplace and church, I am making all things new. The restoration of all things is at hand. Shall I not fulfill my perfect plan in my church, my own first and foremost, as it is time to enter your promised land before I deal with every nation and every land? To those who have surrendered all to heed my call, I am about to deliver all into your hands. I'm going to say that again. That is so power packed. You couldn't make this up from the very heart of God, from his throne to his own right now, to those who have surrendered all to heed my call. I am about to deliver all into your hands. Lord, we receive your word right now. And there's more. I was reminded of Mark 16, 17 to 18, and we read, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. There is faith-filled, fear-free, dynamic living right there in God's word for every child of his who will take him at his word today, who will rise up in the power and authority of his word and will be all he has called us to be. I will, the Lord went on and said, I will thrust the enemy out before you saying, destroy. Divine exposure is coming. Don't partner with, have sympathy for, make allowance or give place to the enemy, but destroy the enemy completely. I was reminded of the battle that I've warred for my mother, my wonderful mama, with the world labels it dementia, the medical field. I label it dementia because behind every debilitating sickness, whether mental, whether physical, whether emotional, is the evil one. Everything good and perfect comes from God. So we can battle all that is of sickness, all that is of darkness, all that is of lack, all that is of confusion, it's not from the Lord. So we can stand on the authority of his word. The Lord has said that we will cast out uh, demons in the name of Jesus. Those are the signs and the wonders that follow us everywhere we go. And I was reminded that just as I battled that uh, dementia, dementia with my mama, that the Lord showed me way back in the early days, a year or so ago, that I was to make no allowance uh, for it. Um, that I was to completely destroy the enemy, that I wasn't to just think 
well, it's labelled dementia. No, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And increasingly in this hour, that we need to, with the authority of God's word, take God at his word and cast out and bind. Whatever we bind uh, on earth is loosed in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We need to be setting captives free. We need to be not accepting the enemy's lies his distortion. I have a great sense of that in this time we must not make allowance but we must confront, we must repent and otherwise if we just accept sometimes the status quo as the world brings it to us what we will do is we will not learn from it, we will not grow in God we will bring no lasting change to the world. I had an experience actually just today, get this, I wasn't planning on saying this, but when I was I'm daily at the hospital with my mama at the moment, and we just celebrated her 83rd or 84th birthday, oh gosh, um, the other day, last week. And whilst I was there and they were trying to maneuver mama, she's very frail for physio. The physio had waited until I'd come in and when I was with Mama, she t she mentioned and she clocked my elder, well, not my eldest, my 16 year old son was with me at the time. And she had clocked how we have this communication and I seemed to be able to break through with her. So she wanted to do some physio when I was there because she felt she would be more responsive. And as I was then trying to explain to Mama what they needed to do, they needed to assess how her um, stature was and how she could sit up. We needed to get a sit on the, the edge of the bed. Um, so that they could see what kind of chairs would be suitable for her going forward, etc. She wasn't being uh, the most compliant with us. And so then the, the physio, this Gail, turned to me and she said, would you pray for your mum? And I'd had to do a double take. I said, sorry, would you pray for your mum? That may help. Now, of course, I pray with my mum every time I'm in there. They've been clocking how... There, there seems to be this breakthrough and this um, this sense of communication and rapport that we have. And I said, oh, I would be delighted to. And then she asked, well, do you want me to pull the curtains around or are you happy to pray with the others on the ward? I'm more than happy to pray. Hey, we'll send out God's word um, loud and strong. I didn't say that bit. That's just me adding that on there. Um, so more than happy to pay, pray with the curtains back. And then she said, do you want me to leave? Or to? I said, oh, no, you're, you by all means stay. And I began to pray the word of the Lord over my mum. I began to declare uh, from Jeremiah the beautiful promise of God, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and to bless you, not to harm you. And I began to then just pray for mum that the Lord would strengthen her, that the Lord's presence and peace and joy would flood her heart and and from praying immediately, mum was happy to to do what was required of the physio. And afterwards, the physio was was pretty amazed um, and said how she had clocked, you know that. When the medical field starts to call on his church for prayer, you know God is up to something. When the medical field starts to realise that there's got to be something more, when all that they're doing and trying isn't working, call on the name of the Lord. Hey, that's revival, friends. Let's bring the revival of the need for Jesus, of his presence, of the power of the Holy Spirit, of his authority into the hospitals when we have to, to we find ourselves there, into our workplaces, into our schools, our universities, our colleges, into uh, the, the grocery stores, wherever the supermarkets, wherever we go, let's bring Jesus to our friends. I didn't plan on saying that, but hey, that encouraged me. And so just know that in whatever arena the Lord brings you into maybe it feels like the lions are, are around you but there is a world watching you and the Lord will destroy the destroyer he will devour the devourer he will shut the mouths of the lives for you and you will give God great praise all of your days as you trust him no matter what you face face it with Jesus and face it with faith so the Lord said I will thrust the enemy out before you saying destroy you may darling that's just Judah oh um, isn't he gorgeous? 
let's carry right on because I've only got a few moments to release this this week. So I'm seizing the day. I am seizing the times for the days are evil and we've got to take every opportunity. And I just felt like the Lord saying it's time, go live. So I am doing, uh, my hubby will be away working away for the next couple of days. We've got GCSEs going on, business to run. And I just had this one moment before we head out to the river this evening with friends um, to bring this message that the Lord downloaded to me from God's heart, I believe, straight to your heart. So I hope you're receiving it now in true mum of many style, in the midst of the real, in the midst of life, in the midst of the raw. Oh, Jesus is right there in the midst of it all. The presence of the Holy Spirit, I pray right now, will touch your heart. If you're in your car driving, if you're at home, if you're cooking dinner wherever you are in whatever time sphere in the world that you're listening to this i thank the lord that the holy spirit is the one who breaks through walls and closed doors and the lord i sent saying today i'm going to bring down every wall of opposition that stood against you child of god and i'm going to bring you into complete release and freedom and to a wide place a wide space where you will display my wonder my glory and my grace to those around you for you too, and to those around you. Oh, hot off the press. Let's just keep going with the flow of the Holy Spirit, but carrying right on. I will thrust the enemy out before you saying destroy. Divine exposure is coming. Don't partner with, have sympathy for, um, or make allowance. Give place to the enemy, but destroy the enemy. Um, we go on and we see in that Mark 16, 17 to 18, the Lord gave me four keys that I believe he wants his children to take a hold of today, to apply in every lock and every closed door that you face and see Jesus open doors for you by his grace, see miracles break out and break through for you. Let me just remind you, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. This is Jesus promise for us in my name, the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua above every name in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So one, the Lord says, cast out demons daily. <laughs> It's not just to be an occasional scenario, but whenever there may be a, a, a spirit of heaviness comes upon you or if you sense you're with somebody and there's a, a spirit of infirmity, of sickness, the Lord says, lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Let's start to be people of his word. When I, I've been very aware, if I sense my kids, you know, some of them going through the teenage years, yes, there's hormones, there's everything else at work, but the Lord wants us to be discer discerning. Are we dealing with the normality of teens or are we dealing with our kids being under siege and under the attack of the enemy and the Lord then wants us to take authority and to daily drive out everything that would oppress our family that snake is not having any place in our homes the one thing God commissioned Adam and Eve to do was to guard and to to protect and to keep the garden but instead they let the snake in. Well, that snake, the one thing the Lord wants us to do is to keep and to guard, protect our garden, our homes, our family. Integrity starts first in our own homes. Our highest calling is our homes, our, our marriages, our families, and then out to, from our Jerusalems, out to the uttermost place places of the world that the Lord calls us into, out to our workplaces, out to nations, wherever he sends us. Um, so number one, cast out demons daily. We've been given all authority. Two, speak in tongues daily. I was reminded, and I'm now doing this all the more, I feel like the Lord has arrested my heart afresh with the importance to be connecting and staying connected to the Holy Spirit when we're in the car, whenever I'm going about my day, to be not just going off in random thinking and thoughts, but to be praying in the Spirit, to be partnering with heaven continually, because do you know what happens when we do that? We start to release God's kingdom all around us. We bring his spirit of love, joy, peace. We bring wisdom, knowledge, understanding. We'll start to see things differently continually. We'll have fresh revelation, a fresh re revealing. We will have discernment when we're dealing with people in our everyday lives as we're connected 
to the kingdom of God. Our connection is through, thank God for the blood of Jesus and through the Holy Spirit who connects us today to all things kingdom. And we then are told to speak in tongues daily, build yourself up in the most holy faith, praying in the spirit, we're told in Jude 1. Thirdly, divine protection over the seen and unseen, over the known and unknown. You'll take up, tackle every challenge of the enemy head on. You will overthrow the enemy, overhaul and overcome. Transform and reform, says the Lord. God's kingdom comes through me and through you. Take up serpents, the Lord says. Drink anything deadly and it shall not harm you. Walk on, go strong, trust me, stay free. I had this sense of it's not deliberately putting ourselves into these dangerous situations, but circumstantially as we face them, the Lord wants us living faith-filled and fear-free. We go about his calling for our lives every day, wherever he leads us, we will follow. And we go in confidence, knowing that nothing shall by any means hurt us. I want to say right there, in Acts 28, verse three to six, we read about Paul, that he'd been shipwrecked and he was on the, um, on the island there. And it says that he gathered sticks in Acts 28, three to six, and he's, he laid them on the fire. A viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand, uh, that wicked evil snake. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to live. But Paul, in as they watched in that, the presence of that arena, Paul shook off that creature. He shook off that evil, wicked snake. We are to shake off every evil, wicked attack of the enemy. And he threw the enemy into the, the fire, that snake into the fire. And the word of God says, suffered. He suffered no harm. The Lord wants to say to hearts and lives today, you've been walking through the fire. The Lord says you will walk through no harm. Ultimately, you will walk through unscathed. You will come through. No, no enemy will bite you or devour you. No actual harm shall come upon you. Verse six, however, those watching, they were expecting then for Paul to swell up and to suddenly fall down dead. Your enemy is waiting for your destruction. Many around you may be looking for you to fail, but your Lord, your King Jesus, he's setting you up for a win. Hear the word of the Lord today, but after they had looked for a long time. They saw no harm come upon him. Oh, how fickle people are, hey? They changed their minds. He went from, this was the Lord confirming, this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me to, through the night. I didn't understand what he was saying when he said, as I woke up, zero to hero. He went through quite literally. Here's an example that we can take encouragement for our lives and know no matter what we face, the Lord will always take us from zero to hero, just like Paul. They thought that he was a murderer. And then in the next instance, they realized, oh my goodness, the God, God is with him. And they changed their minds and said, he must be a God from one extreme to the other. The Lord says, I am setting you up for divine wins in this season. I am bringing divine exposure. I will uphold you in these times. I will uphold you before men. I will uphold you and I will uphold my word in you. Just keep strong, <laughs> says the Lord from zero to hero. So number three, divine protection over the scene and the unseen is ours. No matter what we face, we're gonna face it with miraculous grace and power working in our lives. And number four today, the Lord said, divine dispensary. I thought, what, what do you mean, Lord? Enter the miracle zone. You were born to be my dwelling place, says the Lord. I have made my home in you. I find my resting place on the surrendered throne of your heart. There I will impart such wisdom, discernment, understanding, and all the fruits of my spirit and gifts shall flow from my throne. Where is his throne residing? The Holy Spirit is enthroned. God Almighty is enthroned within your spirit on the throne of your heart. You will be my divine dispensary for the world. <laughs> 
to experience my miraculous works and wonders through. Isn't that wonderful? What a word. Are you receiving his word today? Will you just breathe in the life-giving words from the Holy Spirit today and receive them? The Lord is taking you, beautiful friends, from zero to hero, just like Paul. Heaven and earth will align as you recklessly abandon your life for mine. There's a divine exchange. Our lives, our brokenness, our failures for God's life to be lived out in and through us. How does that look? Total obedience. I answered the Lord in that. How does that look for me? How does it look for you when the Lord says heaven and earth will align as you recklessly abandon your life for mine? You answer that in your own heart right now. For me, it was total obedience. It was doing the ridiculous for the miraculous, whatever the price. And I've put down here, California. <laughs> There's a reason for that. And I'd said a few weeks ago how the Lord had called me to do something so ridiculous. I had a dream. I'm not going to labor on or go into too much of the detail. Maybe I will expand and expand more on this another time. But in this dream, the long and short of it was the Lord said, uh, I want you to go to California. It's good land for you and your family. Well, naturally, I, when I woke from this and I knew it was a God encounter I just experienced and I was seeking the Lord. And I, as he's called me many times in the past, when it was the call to Israel, he had to make it happen. When it was the call to deliver God's word to Lord Alan Sugar, in the same way he gave it to me in the vision, I delivered it. Um, and this time he's saying, go to California. And I looked up. Uh, California, there's a, a church that during lockdown, um, Penny Maxwell, etc., we'd been very much in alignment. The Lord had shown us similar uh, downloads from the Holy Spirit when it came to BLM, when it came to COVID, when it came to vaccines. So I looked up, ah, maybe there's something on there. Where's their church? No, it's not California. It was um, North Carolina, I believe. So I then parked it and I just said, Lord, as you've always had to open up the way in the past, past I surrender reckless abandonment and abandonment to you whatever you want me to do I will do it you just show me within a couple of hours someone sent me through a video of actually Lance Walno um, and uh, they they were saying in this video the Lord was speaking a very similar message to what the Holy Spirit had me deliver uh, on the Gideon call and uh, the Gideon army arising at this time which many of you who are following uh, the Lord through me will have have heard that and yeah quite amazingly the Lord had had me be speaking and sharing out the very same message even before Lance Walnoff I believe was bringing that and then it went to a break in the middle and in the middle the commercial break was speaking about a dream trip to California where God was going to move prophetically it was a um, God had shown them to do this trip in California only for about for a remnant, just what I've been sharing um, for uh, the, the those who felt to heed the Gideon call and who felt that God is calling us to transform nations, etc. at this time um, in the workplace, in governments, uh, in every arena and every sphere of life. So I'm listening to this and then something arrests in me and I know that's where the Lord's calling me to. So I head off to California on Sunday. So it's reckless abandonment. God can still stop. <laughs> I've thought about doing it online, but as Hubby said, the word was very specific in the dream, go to California. So I'm doing the ridiculous to see the miraculous. How does that word of the Lord look to you? Heaven and earth will align as you recklessly abandon your life for mine. It's obeying Jesus at every turn. It's taking that one step when you don't see the rest of the staircase and trusting him to lead the way. The Lord is about to take many from zero to hero. Those who laid down their natural life are about to experience eternal life in this temporal life. Beauty for ashes, joy for morning, a new day is dawning. I literally received that word as the birds started to sing <laughs> uh, through the night. A new day is dawning and the night is no more for the light has risen upon you. You will see clearly in my light and all the riches of my glory will be made manifest before you. Take them. They're yours. Spend them. 
use them, enjoy them. All I purchased for you with my priceless blood will be shown to you and made known through you to multitudes. Zero to hero. Will you with me receive this word of the Lord today as I deliver it prophetically? For it's not just for my heart, but it's for those hearts, that remnant who are surrendering all for the call and cause the very love of Christ in this hour of his power. The Lord is taking you from zero to hero. And here is what it means. This is so beautiful. The Lord is taking you from misunderstood orphan mentality and servanthood to sonship, royalty and ownership mentality. You will serve others' agendas no longer. You will serve your doubts and fears no longer. Only me, as my kingdom, church, rises from the fire of affliction in humility and sacrifice, reformed, full and free, zero the Lord says, zero, you become nothing before me. To hero, I am your hero within. Rise and win. Break the power of sin and we're going to laugh lots as you decree the orders through me. Isn't that beautiful? I loved it. Do you know the Lord sits above the circle of the earth? He laughs in the face of the enemy and those who rise against him. The Lord wants us to rise into our resting place with him and to release his word, his orders, to partner with him, to declare and to decree and so shall it be. We're going to laugh lots as you decree the orders through me. Restore, I heard the Lord saying, Redeem the times, I heard the Lord saying. Recompense has come on my enemies and rewards are released to my own from my throne. In Jesus' name, would you receive the word of the Lord today? I don't want to add from it and I don't want to take from it. I'm just going to leave your heart to ponder it, to seek his face. And if you would let me, may I pray with you today, if you will say, oh Lord, I'm not just going to be a hearer, but a doer of your word. I'm going to receive, believe the prophets and you shall prosper. That's the word of the Lord. 2020 vision is available to us. He's wanting us to rise as eagles at this time. He's unsettling us from the nest. And do you know, just like a, I'm seeing this prophetically right now as a mother eagle, as those little eaglets, when it comes their time to have to fly for themselves, then what she does is she, she takes all of the bedding, all the comfort out of that nest, and then she pushes the little eaglets to the side and then overboard. And when they fall, dropping further and further, they're probably feeling the, the terror in that moment, but then she swoops down and she lifts them up on her wings. The Holy Spirit says, I will uphold you at this time. I'm calling you out of the nest. I'm calling you out of your comfort zone. I'm calling you to obey me, come what may, whatever the price, to follow me and to lay down your life. And if you will be one of those eaglets today that will say, I will receive the prophetic word of the Lord and I will rise on the power of the Holy Spirit. I will soar with the Holy Spirit into all that the Lord has for me to accomplish. Then let's pray today. God's kingdom come, his will be done. Do you know, I've just had a prompting from the Holy Spirit to pray the Lord's word, to pray the Lord's prayer, the prayer Jesus prayed as we go out today from this transmission and as we go out transformed and ready to bring his reformation to those around us. Let's pray today, will you join me? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed, glory, glorified, magnified be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth in our lives in our families in our homes in our workplace on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread all that we need to rise with you and win and succeed lord every need supplied jesus you're the very bread of heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our sins forgive us all that has separated us from you and would keep us in doubt and in chains. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive now all who have hurt us and who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever and ever. And Lord, we say, yes, we will heed your voice. We will follow you, come what may. And Lord, as you have said today, one, we are to cast out demons daily. You've thrust the enemy before us, Lord Jesus, and you say to destroy. We're not to sympathise with the enemy in any way. We're not to allow him to stay, but we are to root out, pull down and destroy all the works of the devil's authority. And I do that right now by the authority of your word. For every listener right now, whatever they're facing, Jesus, we root out, pull down, destroy all the works of the devil's authority. Lord, we say we will heed your voice. Secondly, we will speak in tongues and pray in the spirit daily to build ourselves up in our most holy faith, our connection to kingdom living. And thirdly, Lord, we thank you for that divine protection as we go forth in your name over the seen and the unseen realm, over all that is known and not known to us. We go forth fearlessly and freely in Jesus' name. And fourthly, we will be your divine dispensary, dispensing the word of the Lord, bringing your, dispensing your healing to those who are sick, bringing wholeness to those who are broken, Lord Jesus. We will be your divine dispensary. Use us, we pray. We say yes today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.